The, uh, I will be brief, but as you know, as we follow the media, even in these days, the rising concern about young men going to the Middle East, the search of jihad or in search of adventure, and uh, finding themselves caught up in extremism and violence, and in many cases, uh, converting either to extremist causes or becoming disillusioned and returning. In either case, perhaps uh, resulting in their becoming a problem in the West when they return to the West. There was a book during the Cold War, my war, <coughs> which was a 1949 book called The God That Failed, The God That Failed, that was about people who had embraced communism, felt it was, they were true believers, and they lost the faith. They realized that was not the Holy Grail. And tonight's story is very much a story of conversion, of an epiphany, conversion, and eventual loss of faith. And I think you will find it absolutely fascinating. The <clears throat> story is one that was developed initially by our his then historian, Dr. Mark Stout. <clears throat> and I will introduce him shortly. He will introduce our speakers. And Mark uh, developed this story uh, having encountered the individual of interest in, of all things, now pay attention, particularly you older people, on Facebook. <laughs> so anything can come out of Facebook, whether it's academic research or discoveries from the Spy Museum. <clears throat> it will involve, as you will see, a very complicated case, a very involved case, uh, involving the equities of CIA. Given my own background, I made the choice not quite to recuse myself, I still have to be the museum director, but in essence to give, them their, to give Mark and his associates their lead. Let them develop the case and let the case take them where it may. And that is what Mark and his successor, uh, Dr. Houghton, have done. And so tonight's case will be presented. Mark will introduce the speakers, and I believe also, I don't know if he'll dialogue with the speakers, but certainly handle the Q&A. &Q um, <clears throat> I would say just a word on Mark before I finish. Uh, Mark was our historian from 2010 to 2013. He now directs the master's degree program in global security studies and the graduate certificate in intelligence program at Johns Hopkins University School of Arts and Sciences. He had 15 years in the federal government as an analyst, holds degrees from Stanford, Harvard, and leads in the UK, has co-authored three books, <clears throat> and published a number of articles. So please help me our, uh, welcome our guest uh, introducer this evening, Mark Stout. Okay, Mark. Well, th well thank you very much, I'll be brief. Uh, I'm really honored to be here this evening to introduce Paul Cruikshank, Tim Lister, and most importantly, Morton Storm, who you do not see on that screen right now, uh, for this book launch of, of Agent Storm, which is just coming out today in the United States. It's a remarkable book. Um, and I'm, if you look on the back, you'll find my book blurb for it. Um, a few words about the authors. Uh, in in uh, uh, starting with Tim. Tim uh, joined the BBC just out of college and worked for quite a number of years in the Middle East and then in 1996 moved to CNN. Spent uh, quite a number of years with CNN International. Uh, he has specialized uh, particularly though not exclusively in terrorism and uh, the odds are uh, fairly good that you saw some of his reportage if at no other time than in uh, 2001 when he, when he was at an obscure uh, uh, an obscure village in Afghanistan known as Tora Bora. Um, I'm also told that uh, yesterday at this time he was in eastern Ukraine, so he's an, he's an interesting individual. Uh, Paul Cruikshank um, is a CNN terrorism analyst and investigative reporter. Uh, his website says he's based out of New York City, but near as I can tell, he does every bit as much of roaming the world as, as Tim does. Uh, he has degrees from Cambridge and the School of Advanced International Studies at Johns Hopkins University. And, uh, and I should add that not only is he an excellent reporter, but he's done some really good scholarly work on Al-Qaeda. Uh, in fact, I just sent off a book chapter uh, last week myself, which, which draws in part on his work, and it's, it's a real pleasure to be with him this evening. And then last and certainly not least is uh, Morton Storm, who you'll be seeing uh, on this screen here. 
Uh, Morton is originally from Denmark. He's coming to us from an, an undisclosed location. Can I say the country? In the UK uh, tonight. Morton, you can come on out. You, here we go. <laughs> um, Morton, I, I won't say too much about, uh, there we are. Thank you. I won't say too much about Morton's story because that's the very substance of what we're, we're, we're here for tonight. I will simply say that he, he did some really extraordinary things to contribute to our, to our, our mutual, our joint struggle against violent jihadism and the Al-Qaeda network, and I'm really delighted to be able to call him my friend. Um, just very briefly, I've been studying in various ways jihadist, uh, violent jihadism for some 20 years now, uh, since the Russians invaded Chechnya right at the end of 1994. And I will say that I'm aware, of only other, on, I'm aware of only two other cases that are even slightly, and I emphasize that, that word, slightly like Morton Storms at all. Uh, the first is al Qaeda Collins. Uh, he's an American who converted to Islam, uh, became ra radicalized, and went to Chechnya in the mid to late 1990s to fight alongside the Arab so-called Mujahideen there. Um, he de-radicalized when he heard about uh, people who he thought shared his understanding of the Islamic faith who were in Egypt blowing up women and children. And he said, that's not what I'm in this for. And it eventually became an informant for the FBI. Uh, he wrote a book in 2002 called My Jihad. Uh, the other who's even slightly comparable, I think, to Morton Storm is Omar Nasiri. Uh, he's a Moroccan uh, who um, uh, in the uh, mid-1990s uh, got involved with Algerian jihadist extremists and in Brussels, uh, decided it would be a good idea then to embezzle money from them and then realized that he'd done something very dangerous and needed protection and went to the French government. Ended up as a source for the French service uh, who sent him back to Afghanistan where he reported from inside the camps and later worked with the British service uh, reporting on the jihadist scene in London. In the late 1990s, he also fell out with his handlers and he wrote a book in 2006 called Inside the Jihad, My Life with Al-Qaeda, A Spy's Story. Both of these individuals did their work in the 1990s. Morton Storm's story is interesting in a number of ways. Uh, he's much more recent um, and also much more important. Both Collins and Nasiri were, uh, b frankly, by and large at the margins of a story which in the 1990s, when they were active working for Western intelligence, was not tremendously a big deal to most Western governments. But Morton Storm was right at the core of the most important Al-Qaeda affiliate, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, and his work, we're told, was of direct interest to the President of the United States. And whatever you may think of it, he played an important role. Uh, the precise nature of it is disputed. I'm sure you'll hear some about that tonight. But important role in the killing of Anwar al-Awlaki as well. So one or two technical notes. Uh, we had hoped to have Morton physically here with us this evening. Uh, there were some visa issues, which I'm sure you can uh, imagine what the, the parameters of some of that, that prevented that from happening. So he's joining us on, uh, on video link, as I say, from the United Kingdom. Uh, the audio is in sync. The video may come in, in and out of sync uh, just a little bit. So please uh, don't, don't let that disconcert you. And so then without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Cruikshank, Tim Lister, and Morton Storm. While they're taking their seats, let me just mention one thing. Those of you who want to delve into more detail on the thinking that went through Morton Storm's mind in these, these various epiphanies that he went through, there was a terrific podcast made with our guests this evening uh, by Dr. Vince Houghton, our present historian. So I refer you to that podcast. It should be on the air, I would say, within two or three days at the most. It's an in-depth interview on their experience with Morton Storm. Well, thank you very much, everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much to, uh, uh, and all your team, uh, Peter. And uh, we're, we're absolutely delighted to be here, delighted uh, that uh, Morton can be here as well in this under, undisclosed location. Uh, the palm tree is, is not necessarily real behind him. Um, but but, but Morton's uh, story is, is really quite exceptional. Um, I mean, we've never seen a story like this of somebody who's gone so deep inside uh, the world of Al-Qaeda and, and has sort of come back uh, to tell the tale, not in a courtroom or in an interrogation or in Guantanamo, uh, but also somebody who's sort of been so deeply involved with uh, Western intelligence, the sort of tip of the spear uh, in some of their most important counterterrorism operations, uh, targeting operations since 9-11. Uh, so for Tim and me, uh, this journey we embarked on with Morton 18 months ago uh, has been so rewarding. We've learned so much 
uh, from him 